Hello, everyone. Welcome to church. Good to see so many of you here. We were, uh, well, we weren't. I was a little thinking how many we're going to have here tonight. Looking at the hall 10 minutes before starting time. And um, there was a huge (coughs) emptiness of space. But it's good to see so many of you turned up uh, before time. All right. um, We have new programs at the back. Grab a copy of those. Uh, You can see what's happening in August. And um, I'll read the passage here at the front page. Um, It's from Psalm 20, verses 7 and 8. And it goes this, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of our Lord God. They are brought to their knees and fall, but we rise up and stand firm. And if you look to the back page of your program, there's an encouraging message here from Heike. It says, let us stand. And uh, he quotes passages from Ephesians, from Philippians, from Second Thessalonians. And I'll read the passage in the Second Thessalonians uh, 2.15. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the teachings we passed on to you, whether by word of mouth or by letter, Let us stand. It does not mean only physical standing, but rather our attitude, perseverance, endurance, and holding on to the truth. Those who trust in the name of the Lord our God will rise up and stand. So remember that God is with us. He is there to help and guide us, direct us, and take us through all things that come before us. And we are able to stand in him. Not in our own strength, but in his strength. He will take care of us, of our families, and of our church. Yes. And let's go forth in that. Um, I'd like to invite the worship team up to take a couple of songs. And... Um, We'll go forth from there. We'll have some greetings from Harris and Pukenes families, and we'll hear that after the praise and worship. Good evening, everybody. Feel free to stand. Hello. Hello, Heiki. <laughs> Hello, everybody at home, if there's anyone at home watching. Um, I've just been um, listening to Revelation over and over and over again, and you know, the, the scenes that are described in when the angels and the saints are worshipping before the throne of God and it's really spoken to me about like, do we actually realise what we're doing on a Sunday night? Like we are gathering together and we are praising and worshipping the king of the universe. Like that is the most incredible thing that we have, the right and the privilege to come before the throne of God and worship him Um, And, you know, so often we come to church, well, we just come to church, but it's actually meant to be an active act of worship. And we come here and we actually come before the throne of God. It says that God dwells in the praises of his people. So I just really encourage everyone to give it all you've got tonight and let's really sing and worship God.
Because he lives, we can face anything. And one day we'll be in glory with him. Amen? Okay. Mr. Jones. Thank you, guys. It is so true. Because he lives, we can face it. Tomorrow We can face today. Yeah. Don't have to even worry about tomorrow. For some people, that's all that matters is today at the moment, and that's enough. But there's hope that we have hope for tomorrow as well, because we can face today, we can face tomorrow. Um, one passage here I just read from Romans 15. Uh, it caught my eye today as I was reading my uh, reading plan and it says we who are strong ought to bear with the failings of the weak and not please ourselves each of us should please our neighbors for their good to build them up for even Christ did not please himself but as it is written the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me for everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we may have hope. May God, who gives endurance encouragement, give you the same attitude of the mind towards each other that Christ Jesus had, so that with one mind and one voice you may glorify the God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I think there's a lesson there for us to learn it's so easy for us to look at ourselves and what is happening in my life what is going on in my life and miss maybe something that's going in our neighbors our friends lives and i think that's something that we can remind ourselves daily to turn the focus off us onto that that is happening around us and those that may be in greater need around us. And one of those reminders, again, comes to us today from uh, two short messages that we got from our missionaries, dear friends. Uh, one is the Pukkanen family, and the other is Raya and Kari Harri, uh, both of who are in isolation, isolation, I say, uh, in Finland away from their mission fields due to the current circumstances. And uh, they both sent us a short message and uh, a greeting um, in the last week or couple of weeks. And I'll share a little bit about those. Uh, I'll post uh, Harry's message on the wall there, which is in English. It's uh, dated uh, 27th of July. So relatively recent, but it gathers their time from uh, mid-March in this year right through to this current date. And uh, Pukkonen family sent a message in the uh, second last week in July. And just a summary of 
what has happened. Uh, they returned back to Finland due to Essa's father passing away, uh, and they went there to be part of the funeral and subsequently got stuck in Finland. And that's where they've been since uh, the uh, since uh, March this year. And um, their plans are at the moment that uh, they are scheduled on a flight on 6th of September to fly back to from Helsinki to Singapore and hoping and praying that they can connect and get onto a flight from there to Papua New Guinea. And that's uh, their prayer request for us is to remember that uh, the Finnair flight on the 6th of September would actually be happening and uh, they would be able to fly from Helsinki to Singapore and then uh, smoothly transfer onto a Papua New Guinea flight from Singapore to Port Moresby and um, that would be the first part of the prayer request. And the second part of the prayer request would be that then uh, when they arrive in Port Moresby, that they would be allowed to continue on to their home uh, and rather than having to spend a quarantine in a hotel in Port Moresby, that they'd be able to transfer and continue their flight onto their home and uh, be able to spend the quarantine there uh, rather than in an expensive hotel. So uh, those requests and the third part of their prayer request is that they would actually find a house, a home to stay uh, upon their return or, return or before their return back home because the home that they were living in was temporary accommodation uh, because some other people were on holidays and subsequently they had to empty that before they left for Finland and uh, they need of a new home at their destination. So remember those in prayer, please. And uh, then the other letter from Harris, uh, basically uh, they have enjoyed their time and it's quite a uh, entertaining letter if you read the message email that they've sent uh, of the time. Uh, they were booked in uh, 22nd of March on Sunday to fly from uh, India through to Helsinki but they were advised uh, early that uh, week that uh, all flights out of Delhi were cancelled from the 22nd to 29th of March, and subsequently their flight was cancelled as well. And so they decided that they would stick it out in India and see how things would develop. But then they were advised, given a very short notice, um, that they may be able to get on the flight on the 22nd uh, on a different flight, an evacuation flight uh, that would fly to uh, Amsterdam from Mumbai. And um, they decided to try to get there and subsequently they were able to get some friends to drive them to the airport and they were able to get an internal flight to Mumbai and subsequently able to buy tickets for that flight from Mumbai to Amsterdam and from there to Helsinki. And uh, that all went through, but by when they arrived in Mumbai, there was no tickets to be found anywhere. And after some searching and finding, they were actually able to find the tickets that they had paid for, and they were able to get on that flight and arrive in Finland, and from there they were able to drive to an apartment that they had been prepared for them, that they could stay in a uh, 14-day quarantine, and Raya's sister was able to help them out with food and other services during that time. So they've had a good break in Finland. Uh, Raya had a very busy time trying to coordinate all her work online and uh, service uh, the things through that way. It made a lot more extra work than the normal work would have been, as I think many people here discovered that uh, school and all other things doing online was a lot more work for the teachers than the normal teaching would have been. But uh, they've gotten through all that and uh, they are currently in Finland and uh, their local partners in India had hoped that they'd be able to return in September as their visas expire in uh, towards the mid, late mid uh, September that they'd be able to arrive back early enough to have them renewed in uh, India. But at the moment there are no flights 
back to uh, Delhi, so they don't know when uh, they'll be able to return. So that's their prayer request that God would open the doors and opportunity for them to return back uh, at the appropriate time. Uh, and uh, they'd be able to safely return back home without additional uh, risk and quarantines and separation as they fear that Gary may not be able to return from there, continue on because of his age and that, that he may have to stay in quarantine or in uh, Delhi upon arrival there or whatever else. So pray for them to return at the appropriate time and maybe to get their visas sorted out from outside of India before they, their departure or arrival there, as they, it looks like they're not going to be able to do that in September at the moment. So let's remember them in our prayers. And I'll put that uh, email up on the newsletter on the wall there. You can have a read through it. There's a lot of interesting things and facts there uh, about relating to the work that they've been doing and so forth and um, opportunities that uh, have been given to them in the current situation. So it's not all gloom and doom. It's actually a lot of positive things that have been happening and uh, subsequently opportunities that God has opened up to the uh, different partners and churches in India and uh, Pakistan and uh, Bangladesh. So uh, God is working through all these things in amazing ways. So have a read of that newsletter of the details of Moth and be encouraged that God is in control. He sees the situations and events regardless of how we feel and around us that has happening, but God is in control and he has this all under control and he's working his things through it all so let us be encouraged and let us hold on to that hope that he is in control um, can I ask uh, before we'll pray and I'll ask the communion team then to come up here and we'll serve and take communion but let's pray together for Gary and Raya and uh, the Buchanan family and any other prayer requests do we have any prayer needs here that you'd like to raise your hand or share? Just to honour Mark and Emily and that school today. Yep. Um, so let's just pray that God will bring them wisdom to make those good choices. Yep. Okay, so Chris and Anna have arrived safely uh, in Emerald, and uh, let's pray that they will connect up there with a the local church and find some good Christian friends there to help them along the way. Katya? Okay, Anna starting her new job tomorrow morning, so uh, we're all good. Yeah, thank you. Let's just pray for my neighbours. Okay, so Katya's neighbours, they've been stuck with COVID stuff and that, so remember them in our prayers as well. All right, anything else? Anyone else? Any praise reports? Yes, God is good. Yes, God is good. Some hands up. Yes. All right. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the fact that we have this opportunity tonight to gather here uh, together and to praise you, to worship you, and to honor you through our actions and activities here tonight, Father. We thank you for your faithfulness and your mercifulness uh, in each one of our lives, Father. We thank you for the fact that we have hope in you. We have hope for today, we have hope for tomorrow, we have hope for future uh, that is ahead of us because you are in control. You are taking care of us. You have promised to do, do so each and every day of our lives till the end, Father. And we know that you are there and you will be there for us. Uh, Father, we will remember um, Krista and Anna as they have arrived in Emerald. We thank you for the fact that they have been able to travel there safely. And we pray that ask that you will be there with them and you will lead and guide them each step of the way. As Anna starts her work tomorrow morning, you will give her the strength and courage and uh, sureness that she needs to go through all the daily things associated with uh, teaching and being uh, with the children there, Father. You will encourage her and she can be a real blessing to them there and as also as in the whole community there, Father. They can find and connect up with the ch local church there and find friends and uh, people to uh, share their lives with, Father, and we thank you that you are faithful and good in their lives. Father, you see Katya's neighbours, Father, you know the needs that they have, Father. You will be there with them and you will help them through this time of uh, trial and testing, Father. And Katya and Jacob can be a sharing encouragement to them, and Father, and they can share the love and joy and peace that you can bring into a person's life. 
We thank you for your faithfulness and your goodness in each one of our lives, Father. How faithful and good you have been during this week gone past, Father. We also want to bring the people in Victoria, Father, before you. You see the challenges that many people there are facing, Father. We thank you for the fact that you have been merciful to us here and you'll help us to go through all the situations here and you'll help them also there in Victoria to overcome and conquer and go through it all. We thank you and we praise you for tonight. We thank you for the fact that you are here with us. You will bless Sammy as he shares the word later on, Father. We thank you for the message that you put on his heart and he may share that from your heart, Father. And We may receive and take hold of it, Father, and go forth in your boldness and your strength, Father, as we go forth into the future. We thank you and we praise you tonight. Amen. All right, can I ask Michael and Heike to come here and help with the communion? And um, I will um, read the familiar passage of Scripture from Corinthians. I just opened my Bible up to that. I know sometimes the old one is actually quicker and easier than the new one because you've got to wait for it to boot up and find the place. All right, from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you drink this, eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So tonight we have that opportunity to remember his death on our behalf. All the work that he's done, it's a complete work for each and every one of us. Whether you have received it or not, he has paid the price of it all for us all. And that's a joy that we can hope and look for. And tonight we remember that as we take part of that bread and drink that cup, that he has died. For us, he has shed his blood for our sins, and we have redemption because of that. It's a forever redemption. It's not to be repeated over and over, but it is done once and for all. And if you have received Jesus, we can take part of that tonight. If you're at home, you can take a share, take part of it as at home, get some bread, get some juice or whatever, and drink it and remember his work on your behalf tonight. If Heike, you bless the bread, and Michael, you bless the wine, and uh, we'll go from there. I'll greet you. You loved us so much that you came here on earth to do the Father's will. And you gave your life for us. Your body was torn apart. You were beaten up. You were abused. Everything what you went through, the agony. And all because of my sins and my transgressions. All because of my... Uh, penalty of death that was hanging over my head you took the punishment on you that I could have peace Lord I want to thank you that as we eat tonight take part in this communion that you would speak to us that would be relevant to us that we would receive from you Lord you carried everything on yourself our sicknesses our sin infirmities everything and I want to thank you and give you glory and honor for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear Lord, in the garden, you knew what was coming, and you asked your Father in heaven if there was another way. And he said, no, there isn't another way. And you said... 
not my will, but thy will be done. And what you have done for us, Father, you have given us an eternity with you. And tonight, with this wine, it is a reminder, Father, you knew what was coming and you still did your Father's will. And we honour you and glorify your name. Amen and amen. No, you, you take two plates of bread, Heike, and Michael take the wine. It'll be easier that way, I think. If you take the bread and hold on to that and you'll get the wine and we'll share the, take the, them together afterwards. So on that night, Jesus took the bread and said, this is my body, take in remembrance of me. Let us take the bread. After the supper, he took the cup, said, this is my blood, a new covenant for us. Let's take the cup. Thank you, Lord, that you were faithful and good to us. You prepared everything ready for us. and We can be partakers of that today. Thank you, Jesus, that your blood covers all our sins. In your body, you carried all our sicknesses, all our illnesses. We can give them to you. Thank you, Jesus, that you are here with us today as we have partaken this. As remember what you did on our behalf. That will last until the day that you come back. And then we can take it all together with you in your presence. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll have you come and collect the cup and the toothpicks. And can I ask then the music team to come and take us the rest of the worship before Sami comes and shares the word. I always find such a blessing in communion as well because when you think that when Jesus um, did the communion, he said that he won't drink of this cup or eat of this bread until we're all in that kingdom together. And it's a promise that one day we will sit around the table with the Lamb of God and have communion together with him. It's amazing, isn't it? Um, So we'll go on. We'll do um, only a holy God. Just really, I know this is quite full of lyrics, but just concentrate on the lyrics and give praise to God. Come on. 
Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that your name, oh Lord, thank you that in your name we can face anything that comes against us, Lord. Thank you, God, that you are upon the throne and you are the only holy God, Lord. Thank you that we can hide under your name. Thank you, Lord, that your blood covers us, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you are a mighty God and you are in control of everything, every situation, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you are still on the throne, Lord. And thank you that you are raising up your army to face the darkness that is coming, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you can fill us all with your Holy Spirit. Thank you that we can go out and do wondrous works to bring glory to your name, Jesus. Let your name be glorified once again in this nation and in all the nations of the world, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look for and his
Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Oh, Rabakashande Karabasaide Karabashande. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Rabakashaide Karabasande Karabasande. Oh, Jesus. He is worthy of it all. He's worthy of everything you can give him. And he deserves all of our lives. Recently, um, um, a man wanted me to show him respect. And he said that uh, he's a fifth generation Australian and um, he has 250 relatives in, around here. And... Um, He's, they have a street named after them. And I didn't tell him, but my father, <laughs> he owns the whole street and the whole of Brisbane and the whole of the world, actually. And, um, you know, he made it. So I've got something to be proud of. Um, Let me uh, give you a quiz kind of thing. Who can tell me what it says up there? I'll give you a hint that it's Dutch. <laughs> no, no, no. I won't say that one. Anyone? Uh, I got the world bit right. Wereld, okay. Uh, Acker. Acker is the Wereld. I was in Holland for a couple of years when I was young and uh, this, this uh, phrase stuck in my mind. It's a, wo- a phrase of Jesus. The Acker is the Wereld. And um, it's, it means that the field is the world. Jesus said 
in Matthew 13, 38. I'll read it from here in English. Uh, the field is the world, and the good seed stands for the sons of the kingdom. God wants us to see the world as he sees it. Uh, we, Yoni was sharing about our missionaries, and, and it can get a little bit boring, you know, hearing about these missionaries out there. Who are these people? Uh, but our church has a vision for sending missionaries to the mission field, and so be ready for that. And we want to care for the missionaries while they're out there. Sometimes it has been the, uh, the, the system that, you know, we send missionaries out there and we try to keep them as poor as possible so that they don't, you know, <laughs> get too rich over there. But uh, we, you know, if you send an ambassador to another country, say New Guinea or somewhere, he gets good pay and all these perks and flights back to the country, and we should do the same for our precious missionaries over there and really look after them. And that's why we take up the offering too, that we can support those people, and we want to send new ones, new fresh ones, I believe, because the field is the world. Of course, at the moment, you know, it's a little bit difficult to send anyone out there, but... I believe God wants to give us new ways of communicating the gospel to the world. Jesus told this parable of the weeds in Matthew 13. And um, he, he was telling that uh, a guy had a field of wheat. And uh, next thing, his servants noticed that weeds were coming up in the field. And... Um, and the, the, the owner said, oh, it's just the enemy. He planted, uh, he planted weeds. Oh, he threw, sowed weeds in our field. So, uh, and he said, while you were sleeping, uh, the enemy came and sowed the seed of weeds. Are we sleeping during this coronavirus? Are we taking it easy? I hope not. I believe God wants to do new things uh, through this. It's a new beginning. And uh, like Toppy always says, victory. Every situation, victory. So the enemy is sowing seeds. And the enemy wants to sow his seeds in the lives of of people today. You see it all the time. Uh, God's laws are being you know, put aside and we want to make new laws that uh, are more up to date and politically correct. I was thinking that in, in Finland one guy, he was planting, he had a lawn to make, a really big lawn, and he was planting clover and I said to him, why are you planting clover in Australia? It's a weed. I mean, I, if I see any clover in my lawn, I, you know, weed it out. What are you doing planting it? And he said, because it grows so quickly and, you know, the cows like it and all this type of thing. But, uh, yeah, weeds. The enemy is sowing weeds and in the mines of people today and uh, we need to point this out and let people know that uh, what is God's plan for them and what what is the enemy trying to do and then uh, Jesus said that don't worry about it you know don't worry about these weeds because uh, when it comes harvest time I'll get the harvesters to bundle up the weeds first and throw them in the fire and then I'll gather up the wheat, the good stuff, and uh, put it into the barns. And this is the end of the age, he said, the judgment day. There will be a separation. So things might look like they're going well with some people today and they're doing everything 
that the enemy tells them to do, but one day there will become come a separation, a judgment day, and we will have to stand before God and give an account. I was reading a book recently by uh, Velimatti Kärkäinen, who wrote a book, in, it's in Finnish, called uh, Be a World Christian. Not a worldly Christian, but a world Christian. Somebody who sees the world uh, the way Jesus sees it. We need our eyes opened to see how God sees the world. And uh, he said that uh, <clears throat> a disciple is someone who shares responsibility for the world with his master. So we are responsible for what is happening in the world and uh, you know, we have our own responsibility in this to bring the gospel to people. And then he said a Christian does not primarily live for himself or for his career or his needs. Instead, he lives for the spreading of the gospel. I think uh, Yoni mentioned, or it was earlier on, that it was you, yeah, that we are not here for ourselves. You know, we're just not uh, building our own kingdom or our own career, our own needs. You know, uh, once I get my house paid off, then I'll evangelize or something like that. God wants us to live for other people. And it's the best life, living for God, living for other people. And uh, being a world Christian, some people feel that they are bored as Christians. And being bored is a lack of challenge. We need goals in our lives. Anybody feel like their existence is bored? I know a lot of older people who have been working all their lives and doing things, and they get to retirement, and what what should I do? You know, can't can't settle down. Just um, become bored. Being on the mission field like we were, uh, we had some exciting things. It's not all the time. You get a lot of uh, routine work, but um, I remember going to Eastern Europe during the communist times uh, with a bus, and the bus was loaded with Bibles hidden inside it, and you come to the border and you like hope nothing is found, and we were able to make it through. Uh, China is still an, a challenge if anyone wants to take Bibles. You know, China is uh, waiting for the, you to come there. Xi Jinping is waiting at the border for you. In, uh, in Japan, um, we had some exciting things, almost like, uh, you know, police work, like a movie. Uh, we had this kidnapping Thing. Uh, our neighbor came along and has said, his son has been kidnapped. Let's go to the police. And we went to the police. And um, what happened was his son had just taken off overseas and uh, didn't tell anybody. But the, we got the police to search for them. Exciting things happen in the mission field and in your life too when you uh, give your life to God. Next thing is that uh, heaven is an international community, multicultural community. Um, I don't know if, if you're like me, that um, you look at some nationalities and you think, you know, you, you put them down. Anybody do that? Um, I had one certain ethnic, ethnic group that I couldn't, in my heart, accept. And, uh, you know, I was always like, they're so proud, they think they're good, but, uh, you know, they're messing up their whole country. It wasn't Sweden, it wasn't Russia, so... so. Um, but then I met somebody who was from that ethnic 
community. And I had to really repent and, you know, say to God that I don't want to, you know, hate that ethnic community anymore. You might have somebody, you know, maybe the Americans or uh, the British who you sort of think, oh, they're, they're hopeless. But God wants us to accept we will be in heaven with all these people. So start uh, accepting them. Interesting thing about uh, in this uh, book, A World Christian, it says the population of the world has doubled in the last 50 years. Uh, it's 7.8 billion at the moment. That's a lot of people. Doubled in our lifetime, in some of our lifetimes. It is a lot of people, and that's why cause of a lot of problems, refugees and many other things, looking for food, looking for a uh, good, good uh, way of life. And uh, most of those people have moved into the city. And uh, like 97% used to live on the land 100 years ago. Now they live in the city, and you think how crowded the cities are. We need to open our eyes to see what, what is happening in the world and how we can reach those people. So don't limit your vision to your own surroundings, your own town, but uh, start praying for the nations. I know many of you have already made trips overseas and it's really an eye-opener when you go overseas, you know, that especially how good we have it here and some countries uh, don't have it so good. So the one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one. Of course, that doesn't mean that the people are evil. We, we don't fight against flesh and blood, uh, but we fight against spiritual forces behind those people. We need to value even those that might persecute us like Stephen who prayed that God forgive, <clears throat> forgive them and, and the Paul became a great apostle through that. In uh, Matthew's Gospel, uh, Jesus chose the disciples and uh, first they were cleansed. Jesus said um, in John 15, 3, I'll read it here. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. You are clean. We need to come to Jesus and be cleansed. Washed in the blood. Accept the salvation from God. And then remain in him. So then we can lead others to Christ. We, that is God's uh, desire that other people would be led to Christ. And um, for that reason, each, any one of you can lead somebody to Christ. You can uh, you know, share your story with other people and... Uh, Say, do you want to accept Jesus? I'll pray for you right now. You can do that. There's no reason why you can't. For that reason, I've got four points here in the next slide. Um, for salvation, if you want to share uh, God's plan with someone, these are the, just the simple points that all are sinners, all of us have sinned. We are, we are condemned. We, are, we have really messed it up and we are going down the gurgler. But God loves the sinner and salvation is provided through the cross as we saw through communion today. And then just four scripture verses uh, that you can share with people. Romans 3.23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. 
It's like we, uh, you're aiming a bow and arrow and you miss the mark. That's what it's telling us. We've all missed the mark. And uh, even though a Japanese friend of ours, uh, Seiya, was sharing with, said, I'm not a sinner. Uh, <laughs> But uh, I guess the Holy Spirit hadn't really um, made that real to her yet. All have sinned. Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. We are condemned and, uh, you know, it's not a pretty thing. But God loves the sinner and we all know this one off by heart. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And uh, salvation through the cross um, in uh, Colossians 2.14, this is from the message, the message Bible and I, I love this verse, think of it All sins forgiven, the slate wiped clean, that old arrest warrant cancelled and nailed to Christ's cross. I read it for you in the original version too, so you. 2.14. Having can, he forgave us all our sins, having cancelled the written code with its regulations that was against us and that stood opposed to us. He took it away, nailing it to the cross. All our sins have been nailed to the cross. Praise the Lord for that. Recently uh, in a devotional I I read this, that uh, we cannot appreciate the magnitude of God's gift of eternal life until we first understand that the wages of sin is death. Wages are what we earned, what we deserve. Death is not only physical here, but spiritual and eternal death. Our sin was an offence to the infinitely holy God and thus justly deserved eternal punishment. But God's grace, which was greater than all our sins, brings us eternal life instead. <clears throat> so, the akka is the virald. Can you remember that? Dutch is a very easy language for English speakers. It's uh, between English and German. So. so, don't sit around, you know, Moping, I can't do this, I can't do that. Take what God has given you to the world. If, even if it means going outside your comfort zone, then do it. This uh, situation, coronavirus, is a time for new opportunities in your life and in the spring of the gospel. God wants us to see the world as he sees it. <clears throat> Maybe I can get the worship team to sing that song again, that um, last one we done. And uh, let's stand up and uh, just worship the Lord. I just felt um, led to share. I had a dream a few weeks ago and in it there was a a lady that came to me and she was demon-possessed and I was really freaking out thinking, I don't know what to do, Lord. Like, what do I do? How do I help this woman? How do I cast those out? And it was like Jesus said to me, just lift up my name. You know, just lift up my name. Just worship me and just 
raise my name above all names and the demons will flee. And I think this is what, like this song, You're Worthy of It All, it just, yeah, focuses us on him. And it's not about what our abilities or our strengths or our giftings, it's actually Christ and what he has done. And all we have to do is just give him the glory and and give him the honour. And he will speak for himself. We don't have to speak for him. He will speak through us. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. us into this new week, Lord. Thank you that you will give each and every one of us here an opportunity to share your name and share your love with those around us, Lord. You see that we all go to many different places through the week, Lord, hospitals, universities, schools. Lord Jesus, I just thank you that you will be with us. Let your presence go with us and before us, Lord, so that other people can see the change in us that other people can see your glory shining through us and that they will ask, what is it that you have that we are missing, Lord? Give us the boldness to declare your mighty name, Lord. Just show us that it is not us. We don't have to worry about what we will say because the Holy Spirit will guide us. The Holy Spirit will give us the words. Thank you, Jesus, that you will teach us to rely completely on you for your wisdom for your words lord it is not us but you jesus let us see you glorified in our workplaces in our places of study lord thank you jesus that you will go with us lord amen Amen.